Uh, we are going to talk now about the tennis legend Martina Navratilova, who has defended her comments that it is unfair for transgender athletes to compete in women's sports. Well, Navratilova has been forced to apologise using the word cheat, but said she wants to make sure that women can compete on a level playing field. So should transgender women be able to compete against female athletes or does it give them an unfair advantage? Well, joining us now is sociologist Ellis Cashmore, who says sport needs to adapt to accept transgender athletes. India Willoughby, alongside him, it's Britain's first transgender TV newsreader and doesn't think any trans person, person should compete at an elite level. And from Wiltshire, former Olympic swimmer Sharon Davis, who thinks trans athletes shouldn't compete in female sporting events. So, good morning to all of you. India Willoughby, I want to start with you. You do not think that individuals who are born into a man's body but transition to become women, should then be able to compete against women who were born into women's bodies. I mean, I feel, have to say, mm. I feel nervous even talking about it because I'm always afraid that I'm going to get the language wrong. Well, I'm not afraid it's... to discuss this because I think it's absolutely vital we discuss it. No, absolutely. And if people want to blow up about the odd word here on there, they are doing what they normally do, which is bullying people into being silent about a very sensible debate. But I you think. know what and I mean. I know exactly what you mean, and I think the root of all that is that LGB at the moment is more like the KGB, in that no alternative opinion mm -hmm. is allowed. Now... The facts actually speak for themselves when you look at the record books as well. You know, I think I looked up last night, there are 2,000 men in the world at the moment that can run 100 metres faster than the greatest sprint, female sprinter of all time. Mm. 2,000 men. 1,500 of the top male tennis players could beat Serena Williams. Yeah. So if even one of them decides to, to become identified, all you have to do, you don't have to fully transition or go through any surgery or anything like that, you just have to say, I identify as a woman. You need you to have, be on hormones. You have hormonal doctors. treatment to reduce your testosterone levels to the required level, mm. but you physically remain the same, and then you can compete in the women's yeah. sport. And it's not just about strength as well. I mean, I... Obviously, I'm not on testosterone anymore. I actually have less testosterone than a natural-born woman in my body. Mm. Um, it's more to do with the fact that if you've gone through male puberty, the chances are, not exclusively, but mm. the chances are, you're going to be taller, broader, mm. your stride is going to be greater, your reach, all of these factors come into play at the elite level, where margins are really Well, let's fine. bring in Sh Sharon Davis. Sharon, you've competed at the elite level of women's sport. It seems to me it's incredibly troublesome, the journey that this is all going on. I completely salute Martina Navratilova for putting her head above the parapet. She's been instantly shot down. She's been fired from charitable organisations in America because of this, being accused of being transphobic, despite being one of the biggest supporters of transgender people imaginable, frankly. But tell me this, from a pure sporting perspective, from your point of view, what is the issue? Uh, the issue is if, obviously, you've gone through puberty. I mean, India said it all, really. And if you go through puberty, you have all the benefits of having a male body. And even if you transition and reduce your testosterone, you're still going to have those benefits. You're going to have the, the bone structure, the slightly bigger heart, more red blood cells, um, you know, the, the smaller pelvis sitting on a cycle. That makes quite a big difference. So, therefore, a female athlete competing against a transgender female is always going to be at a disadvantage. Now, I, as you said, competed in the 80s when I was uh, with, with the East German system. It was a, a different process process, but the same aim result. You stood on the block knowing that you just could not beat this person next to you, no matter how hard you trained. And that's why I've come out and said what I've said, to support Martina, as has Paula, you know, as has Nicola Adams. Many people are actually saying, look, come on, you know, we are not transphobic whatsoever. We, we understand that transphobic uh, men and women have gone through a really tough process and we very much support them. But actually, we also need to support female athletes as well. So, I mean, I suppose the obvious question then is, if, they, if we say, right, transgender women, who were born to male biological bodies, they can't compete against women in sport. How should they compete? Because what you don't want to do is then discriminate against transgender women athletes. What is the fair solution, do you think? Because that seems yeah, to me absolutely. to be an obvious second question. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the difficulty is you can't really hold uh, another category alongside of the Olympic Games because transgender women and men would be such a small category, it would be very difficult to hold a competitive race. But maybe what you could do is have a transgender Games, which could be put on across the whole world by the transgender community, the same as they have the transplant Games, which are really successful and very large. So there are lots of options. I'm not saying that anyone that's transgender should not be able to compete in sport, take part in all sorts of different activities. But at elite level, when we're talking about people's careers or communities, Community, you know, uh, I don't know, college um, sponsorship and, and scholarships and all those sort of things. I think you would be actually removing those opportunities okay. from from females, from younger women. Professor Ellis Cashmore, mm. um, you disagree with both Sharon Davis, who's competed at elite level, and India Willoughby, who is in exactly this position. But right. I can understand the objections of both of them. So mm. I think it's completely understandable. But here's the reality. This is a 21st century, a century in which we are embracing gender fluidity. The prison service, educational institutions, uh, the military, you name it, all the major institutions of society are getting to grips with gender fluidity, and they are going to have to accommodate yeah. trans people in the future. Sport is not exempted. Well, how do you make it fair? Here's wants to segregate them. I no, no, I want to make you... No, oh, or, point. or separate, no, shall I, we no, say. No, no, no. What Don't, do you want to do? Here's what I want to do. I want to... I want transgender people to be afforded absolute equality and fairness, right? That's One. what I'm arguing. One. There is nothing fair or equal about allowing transgender women who were born to male biological bodies to compete against women. That is not fair, fair and or equal. equal. It's, not, it's unfair there and is, unequal. There is something of a myth of fairness in sport. Sport has never been fair. You bought into that myth, so have a lot of other people. But let's face it, if I wanted to be a jockey, I couldn't be. Nature endows her gifts unevenly in society. I couldn't be a jockey. I couldn't be a basketball player. You might make the cut in basketball. You're what, six foot one? Mm -hmm. Something like that. So you might just about make it, but you'd still be a small guy on the NBA circuit. We just have to come to terms with the fact so you that think it's okay. sport is so let me ask unequal. This. So what about this, then? What about... As mm. Martina Navratilova put in her point. You take this to uh, the worst extreme, right? Which is? Which is that we know lots of cheating happens in sport for commercial Martina games. Martina has withdrawn that no, no, remark I'm not about, talking about cheating. I'm not talking about that. I think it's wrong to call the transgender athletes cheating. There is no deliberate but it is intent not, to procure Let me finish my question. Advantage. Let me finish my question. The point I was going to make is this. It is not beyond the realms of fantasy mm. that a low-ranking male tennis okay, player... OK, Well, well let me finish. I, I know I, what you're going get, to say. Well, let me finish what I'm going to say. Which has happened. The top 1,500 male players in the world mm. would beat Serena Williams, the greatest tennis player of all time, right? So... Okay. So what happens if one of them decides for purely, mm. purely financial mm. gain. To put his hand up, yep. say, I identify as a woman, yep. I'll have a testosterone treatment. He doesn't even I'll, need to do that. Right, I'll compete against the women, I'll win tens of millions okay. of prize money, I'll be a champion at everything, and I will effectively destroy women's tennis, right, by doing this, and then go back to being a man in three years' time when my career's over. Okay. What's to stop them doing okay. that? OK, well, nothing theoretically. How can that be fair? Well, let's just... Let me run the scenario past you again. So a 15-year-old, we'll call him Colin, uh, decides he wants success, he wants the fame, he wants the money, he wants a celebrity status, there's the adulation that comes with sporting excellence. And for the next 20 years, that's the duration of an mm. average sporting career, Colin becomes Colleen mm -hmm. and self-identifies as a woman, a richly garlanded career comes to a mm. close when she uh, reaches the age of, let's say, 35. Right. Calls a press conference, says, I want to thank God, I want to thank all the people that supported me, especially my fans, oh, and I'm retiring. By the way, I want to be known as Colin. I'm right. going back to being a man. Do you think that's a realistic no, scenario? No, but what I do think is realistic is my scenario, it's... which is actually we see so much cheating at high-level sport But now. why would Cycling someone live like... a facade? You don't think that's a big Indeed. deal? I think it's quite likely that somebody might leave it's a facade for three years to make money. I think the 1970s, where you have states such as the East Germans, where 
women were fed uh, testosterone. Yes. They were forced, effectively forced into sex change. To, this yeah. is a possibility. It could well, happen. And at the end of the day, the record books speak for themselves. And even what if you look at male record well, times compared Ellis, to female Ellis, record even times, if there my is scenario, clearly, yeah, Ellis, quite clearly, a discrepancy. Ellis, my point was the worst-case scenario. But take the average-case scenario going on right now. I was in America the last few weeks, right? In Connecticut, the, mm. the athletics championships, right, at oh. sort of 17, 18-year-old level, are being completely dominated by transgender women who actually are six foot two, three mm. inch, very powerful former male biological bodies. How can that be fair? Here's what happened there. The girl who came, the girl who came eighth yeah. lost out on qualifying for the state finals and a potential $200,000 scholarship because the two winners were transgender women who were just built so powerfully and were so fast, she didn't have a chance. And that I'm cannot not, be fair. I'm not suggesting that there is an easy solution What is this. the solution, then? I think we have to embrace inclusivity. What does that mean? For the, well, that, what that Sport means is, is about honor, that the person... At the end of the day, what the that, spirit of sport... You can say all these let things, me, let, me answer, what is it actually mean? let me answer the question, then. Be silent. Inclusivity means that we assign the person to whatever event their present-day sex suggests they should compete in. OK, Sharon, are you I don't persuaded? understand what that even are means. You Sharon, well, our, our Sharon. viewers End will. Sport, Sharon, you know it. look, you've heard the debate if, here. If you are a man now, you compete as a man. That's but, but, but hold, but the whole point is that transgender okay. women okay. identify as women and are recognised as such. And that's, no one's disputing their right to identify as a woman. Sharon. What I'm disputing is their right to identify as a woman and then unfairly mm. compete against women born to female biological bodies. That is the debate. Yeah, it's not it, about being anti-transgender. And Sharon, are you persuaded by Professor Cashmore's theory? No, absolutely not. I mean, I think that's the argument, really, isn't it? I think it's the word gender and then there's the word sex. And I think mm. sex means the, the biological sex that you were born into and that is going to affect you for the rest of your life because that is your DNA, your XY chromosomes or your double X chromosome. And you're not going to lose that whatever, you know, you're, you're given or whatever you suppress. So, Sharon, how and then do you there's stand your gender on the of choice. And I think it's case. really important that we support the... Sharon, how do you stand on um, I stand on, on the... Uh, we've already had this discussion. Not today, we've, we haven't. We've already had that discussion once before, actually, on the radio ten know, days ago. I know. So, <laughs> and you know that I, that I stand on the fact that she should be able to compete if well, she reduces her yeah. testosterone. She was born a woman. So, but no, that but is an individual is case. That's not what we're talking about today.